Okay, so as you can probably see, we've gone through and it's dried underneath, okay? It's nice and smooth. We've got no lumps, bumps and joins and gaps and anything else that we might need to take care of. And particularly nice is these underwing joins that we did, but as you can see that post shading is showing through quite nicely. We haven't quite finished with there, but at the same time, we've got to do the top area. Now, um, obviously we're going to be covering a few things on this. So this one is going to be sort of freehand camo. So all we're going to do now, using our paint that we did the underside, because it's the same colour, we're just going to work it around the top. A little bit of run on. So a bit of trouble with the airbrush there. Okay, so what we do, we use our instructions that we've actually got our colour called outs for the, the paint charts, and we're just going to work our way around the actual model. Now I've done everywhere else, so all we're doing is going wider than you actually need. So what we're going to do, we're just going to rotate the instructions the same way as we're looking at it, and all we're doing is, it's like a mirror image on these MIGs, is just putting down the paint uh, through on the top, just down here, and then roughly it's just going to come, nothing particularly fancy with this pattern, over the top, just like so, in there, and as it dries back, it'll dry back similar to the original colour. So we just dry that down. Now what we want to do now is slightly lighten up the paintwork. So what we've done, we've gone around to all these areas and just put them in, but they're always a lot wider than you actually need. So when we come with a green, we can cut it over. If you don't do it wide enough, you end up with a too darker with this post shading, uh, pre-shading showing a little, little bit in between. So all we've done here is literally whip around with the actual one and just gone in here, we've gone around here and we've left gaps in it, as you can probably see around the front on these wing taps. So when the green goes on, the pre-shading the green shows through. Otherwise, if we try and put it over here, we've already faded it a little bit, you'll never see the green come through. First thing we need to do is also slightly lighten these panels because we had that the brown, uh, the black in there first from the actual pre-shading. So what we need to do is just slightly lighten it back. And what we're gonna do is these inside the panels away from the pre-shading. And all we're gonna do is give it a slight little bit of mottling. So all we're gonna do for that is use the original color. I've already got another one here. We've got the original color just in here. And then all we're going to do is come in and we're going to very heavily thin it, okay? So this is going to make this probably around about 75% thinners to paint now. The reason for doing this is it will blend a lot more. You can get in a lot finer, a lot tighter control and everything else like that. But just make sure you give it a good old mix in the colour cup, just like that. Okay, now we need to blow through all the paint that is in this part of the needle. because so obviously it's thin up here, but it's still thick in here. If we put it on, it's gonna be thick and speckly. Okay, so we just blow it through, and you'll feel it when it comes through the thin stuff, because all of a sudden, the pressure, like there, picks up and really blows through quite quickly. So we just move the instructions out of the way. So all we're doing here is literally gonna go around and pick out the centers of those panels like we were saying. So all it is, literally we're in here, we've got the sound, same as we're doing before, check our flow off to one side, okay? And all we're gonna do is just lightly mottle the inside. So make it quite squirrely all over the place. And if it's looking a little bit, shall we say, gritty, things like that, thin it even more. You want it to go on quite wet looking. It will soak in, it will blend in. But if I do one wing, you should be able to see it quite clearly. But what I tend to do is little figure of eight patterns in the centre of the panel and go over them. Okay, but just keep it as a, a sort of centre. Then what you can do, if we can show you the difference now, you might be able to see this bottom one now is very patchy, quite lumpy and everything else compared to the top, it's quite straight. Might be a better angle, you can see it like that. So it gives it a more mottled, lumpy type of look to it rather than the other side. And then what I tend to do is for its final blow over, we have it like this. All we do is get our original color that we got here, this light and thin color, direction of the airflow, and just blow it right over the entire wing. We'll just dry this down and it just 
unifies all that mottling in. Now obviously it's got paint on this, it'll come out, but you can probably see now, here it is, quite mottly, lumpy, everything else. This one's quite straight, you can still see the panels. And also it gives a different texture and tone and depth to the paint as you go round. Now obviously by the time it's had a wash on it and things like that, it should give you that sort of nice sort of deteriorated, worn down, grimy look to it, perhaps touched in. And at this point you can obviously go along and give it new panels, perhaps it's had replacement panels, perhaps it's had a touch up, little things like that. Obviously modern Navy aircraft have a lot of that but you can see it gives it that nice sort of mottled worn effect to it rather than the other side still quite bland so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to pop around everywhere before we come along with the green and put these mottles onto it some areas you might want to put a little bit more mottling than is actually on here at the moment other areas you might want to do a lot less obviously depending on dirty grimy areas perhaps down the back here now the nozzles you might want to make it more grimy than, than it would be bleached but just take your time with it doing figure of eights will just give you that nice mottly type of look for it
Okay, so there we go, that's done. Now what we've done underneath here, we've masked up, okay, put the tape in, really just to give us a covered edge. I've still got it slightly set back so it's a faded edge. This front one here is quite a hard edge, the rear ones aren't. I've got a little bit down here just to catch any overspray so it doesn't go down the side like that. So we're really happy how that's come out. It's looking nice and patchy and mottled underneath, giving us that nice warm look. Okay, now the thing with the paints, Obviously Russian paints, especially in acrylic, are notoriously hard to match and everything else like that. What's happened is Eddard have called out that you're going to need um, some 320 mixed with some uh, 325, a ratio of around about the sort of um, 2080 mix to the grey with the green. Trouble is it looked far too light to me. So I was experimenting a minute ago and I've come up with this mix here. Now this is my own out of the two, which I think is a better colour. And this is a straightforward 50-50 mix between the two. Now obviously there are Russian paints coming along and everything else like that. But as we were saying before with the paints, it doesn't really matter because like this one is supposed to be an old weathered, um, it's extremely hard life that they have and things like that. So unless you're doing it factory fresh, straight out of the paint shop, it's really not gonna matter. So okay, we've got a mix in here of about 50-50 with what we've made up. Just check our flow, happier how it is. Now we want a nice faded edge in between. There's no hard lines with this one, exactly how it runs through and all the other things. So all we're gonna do is start with just liberally on the outside, building it up just as we did the gray work. So the pre-shading will show through. And we're gonna take it close, but not up to the join. Okay, as you can see, it's a thinner colour, so it's going to take more to build up. Just like so, okay. Now if we just bring you in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see it down here now, if we pop a couple of paint jars underneath. Now obviously it's a bit tricky to me because I'm sort of doing this somewhat backwards. Try and do my best. Okay, so what we're going to do, cut into air, okay, the pressure is still quite high, it's still around about 25 to 27 psi. We are shooting it not straight down from above because obviously the overspray will go both sides and you'll get speckling. We're not coming in directly from the bottom, we're coming in about a 45 degree angle, so all the overspray blows forward and off the top of the wing and out of the way. And what we're going to try and do is cut them in to the other side. Now it's quite easy here, we've got a panel line that runs through here and it's gonna follow that exact line. So that's all we're gonna do for the moment. Starting off of the model down below, happy with the pressure, see how it's coming out. And all we're going to do is just come in, just make a few passes, then we're back filling towards the inner part of the, the wing. Just like so to give us our camo work sprayed in. And we want it to be very light, very feathered and everything else because we want it to look like it's warm paint. If you come along and you put it on and it's too sharp, what tends to happen is it gives that effect of being new. This way it gives it an old look. Now what we want to do, because we did basically a straight nose, we just need to maneuver it a slight bit, just give it a little bit of edge. The way of doing that is I do these little roll circles just along the edge, just to change its flow of direction. just like that and then all that does it gives it a nice faded in line to it between the two then what we can do we can think that you can probably see it on the camera it's quite strong the pre-shading so we're just going to go round and just knock it back just a fraction over the top just like so okay so the pre-shading you can see is nice and gray and don't forget what we're going to do we're going to come back in a moment and actually go over the, uh, the parts of it in the lighter green to give it that worn look like the actual rest of the mix got. But obviously we'll do that after we've done everywhere else. So what I'm gonna do now is carry on with all the, the other areas. Always keep your instructions rotated to how you need it. And it'll just make things a lot, lot easier as you go around and spray the rest of the model. So I'm just gonna carry on now doing the rest of it. Okay, there's the camo work all done, 
pretty nicely on there. So we've got pre-shading showing through everything else. Needs a little bit of tidying up, but that's what we do afterwards. But all we need to do now is go around and do exactly the same with that mottling effect as we did before. So what we've done here, we've got, again, added another 50% thinner to what we've got in the color cup. So we're like 75% thinner to paint. And we've added one brush full of that gray color in with the green, okay? So all we're gonna do is exactly the same again. We're just gonna go around doing those nice figure of eight, okay, in the center of all the lines, just to mottle it all down. So keep it thin. Nice swirly patterns, just to mottle it all in and give it that sort of nice patchy effect to it. And then what we can do, we can come back then with some of the, the original colour, backfill again, just the way we did with the green. And that way we'll get a nice warmed down mottled look to all this paintwork. Okay, so as you can see, we've got all the, the mottling type work done. So if we bring you in a bit, you can probably see it's a little bit wet and shiny in places, but hopefully you can see there in the light that it's got that sort of mottled texture, different types of dirt, uh, where it's been ground into the paintwork and everything else. So give us that nice sort of weathered, textured, worn down, repainted type of look to the entire thing. And it's one of those ones, it's quite hard to see when it's nice and glossy like this, but hopefully when we get it down, you'll be able to see it a lot more. All I've done is go around, as you said before, with lots of little uh, different shades of the actual green and the gray by adding tiny little bits of white and tiny little bits of black. Go in the white stage, go the centers, put them in, come back, put perhaps the original green, do that, and then a slightly darker shade. If it looks too much, just go back, and that way you can build them up between the two. Okay, you're probably gonna lose the pre-shading as we did do in a few areas, especially around here, around the front end, so I've had to go around and do it again. But that said, you can obviously pop those back in by using a slightly dark color and following around the actual lines. Also, you can tidy up or distress the camo pattern as you feel. Next thing to go on, really, is all these dark areas, which obviously all the, um, the uh, sort of carbon fiber areas and the more fibrous areas for the actual um, paintwork. So obviously we've got to do these ones around the nose, we've got to do them around the tail, and there's other ones down the middle. So we can get those done, then we can get some lacquer on this one, protect it, and get on with Declan. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some 6mm Tamiya tape. Now, as I said before, we had a couple of options on how we were going to do this. we just grab some fresh kitchen roll to put this on. So because we've got a nice wider area down here at the front, what we're actually going to do now is tape up the nose section. So as I said, 6mm tape, more than obviously we need. Starting at the top, what we're going to do is put a nice wide swish right on top of that panel line. Now, obviously, the thinner your tape, the more it will conform. But if you get tiny little wrinkles, don't worry. Just make sure you sweep them forward like this. Okay, and what we're going to do is run this around the front. Just be careful of any photo etch parts. Just make sure that all these little areas are nipped in. Now, obviously, we've got an overlap here. So we'll take that around the back. Okay, and we're just making sure that we've actually got the nose to the right section. So obviously be careful that you're actually following the correct panel line and things like that, which we are not, sorry, I've brought this one too far forward. 
So we'll just do that again, and that's why it's well worth checking your references. So we're just going to pop this in again. So I'm allowing, it's probably about to this area I'm looking at here, about sort of five mil. So I'm just going to follow it the other way around. I said before, we've got this tape. So we'll just let that fold right out of the way. So just all these little rucks you get there, make sure they're all nicely forward. So we're just going to follow this one right the way around. So it's just the end section that's on. Just like so. Okay, and then obviously we've got a little bit left over. So what we're going to do is just take it slightly to the inside. And then what we can do is we can backfill with something like a, a 40 mil tape. Now, because we've got fresh paint down here, little trick, take off a piece you need, stick it on the back of your hand, give it a rub, and the oils and bits of skin and all the horrible bits really will get stuck to the tape. So it's less tacky and you're less likely to peel any paint work off because even with the best tapes in the world, they do have a habit of ruining your paint work. So we're just gonna come across that, screw it all nicely down. We're gonna, just gonna rub our nail to make sure it's all flat around there. Now for doing the radomes and everything else like that, this is basically your gunship gray type of color. Obviously again, we can distress this, we can lighten and darken it because if you look at these different areas, brand new noses tend to be very, very dark. As time goes on, they fade and as they weather in and all areas like that. If you wanted to, you could use XF24 for this. Um, if you haven't got any of this one lying around, let's put that top on over there. So what we're gonna do, just gonna grab this straight into the color cup, neat. Okay, the reason for spraying this neat is so it dries a little bit textured. So when we come along with a weathering wash um, a little bit later on, it's got something to grip to. Also, it will give us that more stipply, very, very flat look. So we'll just spray it on. The other thing as well, by spraying neat, is that we won't have any of the, the bleed through that you'll get because it's a lot thicker paint. Okay. coats so keep it quite dusty nice and textured and then what we'll do we'll just take this one off so we can have a look the other thing as well of course you can reuse your masking tape so keep this a little bit spare and be able to use that again I probably won't use the rolled stuff the thinner stuff but you can do if you like so we we'll just peel this off and we'll see what we get and there we go there's our no section on the MIG done all right, now what I've got to do is obviously a little bit of tidy up between the two as these go through because I didn't allow totally, we were saying on the front end, you can see it down here for this front part, but that's okay. We'll just put some tape on there and we'll backfill with the green uh, and we can do some little tidy up with that if we need it anyway. But that gives us our type of look on the nose there. So what we can do now, we can go around and do things like the tails, the tail planes, things like that. And there's a little trick for doing those as well, just to speed things up. Instead of going along these and masking up obviously all the different areas, what you can do is just place your tape right over the top like this. Okay, then grab a sharp knife. I'm going to try and follow. Pop your nail in the panel lines and things. As long as you are following the correct panel line, they're quite tricky to see on this one. Okay, so we'd like that. So if you need some guidance, just have a look around. But what you can do then, you can mask them a lot quicker by just cutting it out like that. And then what you can do, your extra areas, you can fold down. And we need to paint this area at the top. So it just adds a little bit of time. So if you've got some complex shapes, sometimes it's quicker to overcover the area, like these ones down here, you can either do round them or you can just put one piece over and cut them in, whichever is your choice. So we're gonna get these gray areas all painted up.
go, just like that, coming along there quite nicely. Okay, so we'll be going around masking out. A couple of little things we've done. We've done these rear engine, metalizer paints again, just as we did the, the nozzles, just put those down in there. As you can see, we've gone around, done a few of these lumps and bumps. Some of them are quite tricky to get to, especially some of these side ones. So they've had a little bit of touch up. So the only thing I've just done, just uh, spray gun metal, Put the lid on before we spill it everywhere. This is the gunmetal metalizer one just down here on the bay. Now, probably you could use a shinier one or something else like that, but what I was trying to do was just give it that sort of muted back weathered look rather than trying to get into here with really heavy sort of shiny surfaces. So what we're gonna do, we just give us a bit of a rubber, like a genie, and just bring it to life. And I think it'll be adequate just the way it is. Just give that a bit of a buff. Great thing as well with these buffable ones is that you won't end up buffing the, the surface around it. You can probably see there's that gun one in there just like that. So that's those areas done. Obviously we've done these down here in the grey, we've done the, the anti-glare top shield, things like that. So we're really moving forward on the build. It's looking very nice. The other thing as well, we've done the leading edges on these tails. Obviously we've painted those at the same time. And if I can get these off, what we need to do is just buff up these metal areas on the leading edges of the tails as well. So we're just trying to get this off rapidly. <clears throat> Always a testing time when you do it. The great thing with metalizers, because they dry so rapidly, um, I'm sort of rapidly becoming a fan, you can probably tell, is that you don't get any overspray or you know bleed through and things like that. So if we just show you on this one, it should be quite a nice one for you to see. You can probably see we've got it just down here. Let me move this one out of the way. See it down here, it's very dull, nothing exciting. Okay, and then what we do, just give this a couple of passes, and it's turned out nice and shiny. So we just do the same on the underside. So then when you compare the two, you just give it a bit more of a buff here. If you compare the two, you should see the difference you actually get. Nice shiny, obviously unmasked than the one that hasn't been done, but you can probably tell in the lights, gives that a real nice metal look to it without being too strong, because that's the thing, we don't miss in glaring and reflecting light because it's not supposed to be a chrome finish or anything else like that. So I'm gonna get these bits unmasked. To be honest, I'm gonna leave it for about an hour now to totally dry off because I've got lots of things and things are slightly tacky, especially these little areas down the side here, because it's one of those points you tend to grip the aircraft. So as that's drying, what I'm gonna do now is crack on with the undercarriage, get all that sorted out, um, put together, very straightforward, so we don't really need to do a run through on that one. Um, and then what we can actually do then is get this a coat of clear onto this to seal it down, get it all in, we're all happy, and then we can move on, we get some decklin on. Okay, so there we go, camera's moved a little bit. There's our nice MIG. All those areas are done now, the metal work at the back and everything else. Nicely dry, really happy how it's turned out. Got no real concerns about anywhere at all on that one, which is quite nice. And so we've buffed up and done the tail planes as well, so they're all nicely done and weathered in with the metalizer parts done. Same time, I've done the pylons, I've also done all the geared doors, a couple of ejector pin marks in there, to be honest, that need to come out, um, but nothing that's too much in the way. You can easily get rid of those, so I didn't cover that particularly. Um, the other thing I've done is the speed brakes. Now, these are the speed brakes which are gonna go on the back. Now, I've done the metal on the inside because I've got no real references, um, so I've given them a, a coat of metalizer and a light rub around with a cotton bud or a Q-tip just to get those done. So they're built, but they're still a little bit wet. Now, this little spidery guy is the activator for that back part. Now, to be honest, getting them out of the sprue, I snapped off the little um, hydraulic rams, so I've remade new ones out of little bits of um, old off-cut of a styrene strip and things like that. So that one's a little bit wet at the moment, and obviously it's quite fragile, but it's quite nice how it has it in the kit, so I thought we'd have it all open. One of the last things to do, just before we put the coat on, I want to do it now, is to spray this canopy, so very carefully. We're gonna pull the canopy off. First time it's been off, so we just move that out of the way.